check this out. Okay. I look good. Hello, everyone. And Arian and I are so excited to be with you today. Um, we are going to share with you Canva hacks to make your marketing really, really pop. And as I bring up the slide deck, Arian, why don't you tell them a little bit about like what we did at ANC and why we're here today? So um, Liz and I presented this session at ANC and it went over very well. We were in the 30 minute time slot. So we were just talking nonstop um, and it's a lot of information to get at once. And it's, there's so much good information that you can use in your programs. Um, so we were, I just felt like a chatterbox. I just kept going and going and going, but here we're going to kind of slow it down and show you step-by-step step on um, what we talked about at ANC in Boston this year. And um, hopefully you can use some of this, these tips and tricks in Canva in your programming marketing. Um, and yes, so thank you for joining us again. And we're um, happy to do the session again for you guys. Perfect. So this is a great reminder. Definitely. This is another reason not to miss those ANCs. Lots of great sessions. Um, so thank you to everyone that's there. Um, so like we said, it's Canva hacks to make your marketing pop. This is advanced level Canva. If you have never touched Canva before, you might get overwhelmed. Um, I, we always encourage everybody to create that free account. You get a free pro account as in, um, since you're in education. So create that account, play around with it, but we are going to level you up today. So advanced tips. Um, but uh, so, like I said, we're going to make sure that, you know, if you're not familiar with Canva, you know, you're going to make professional marketing collateral, um, improve on the existing content you already have. You might be taking pictures of your food, but how can we make that food really pop on the on screen um, and show you different ways that you can, um, how you can use this collateral. Um, we cannot do this session without a very, very special shout out to Michaela. Um, she is a uh, a complete rock star on our team and she teaches us these hacks. <laughs> so uh, we have to really thank Michaela um, because she helped us not only prepare for this, but she keeps all of us in the know with all the great things. So if you are not following Sea level Social on Instagram and Facebook, follow because um, Michaela, Allie, Arianne, they're all sharing hacks all the time. And Michaela loves to make Instagram reels showing her Canva hacks. So please be sure to follow us. So with that, um, Arianne's going to show you a bunch of uh, really cool options, and then I will pop over and do the same. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to just work live in Canva. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to create a QR code. So here is a hiring graphic that we've created for Russellville, and I just want to pop in a QR code. So um, Canva makes it very easy. You're going to go down to apps, and um, it's... You scroll down, it's right here. You just click that QR code. It's gonna populate this URL um, empty link for you. So you need to fill that with the link that you want to put as the QR code. So I went to Russellville's um, page. This is their employment opportunities for substitute information. I'm just gonna copy this link over and I'm gonna paste it in this URL. It's gonna generate the code automatically for you. So then you can put this on any marketing collateral. You can make it smaller or bigger. Um, and we're just going to pop that right in the corner here. And then that's going to go on all of the um, social media graphics for the hiring opportunity for Russellville. So very easy. Again, you're going to go down to apps um, on the left-hand side. You're going to populate that code and it's right there and it makes the QR code for you. Moving on, we're going to go into Duotone. So this is a really cool hack that you can do with your logos um, for your nutrition department. I will preface and say that please talk to your communications department when doing this hack. It's just to help your um, picture pop a little bit better with the logo, as well as um, if you have a dark background, I'll show you a little bit about that. But please talk to your communications department just so you know that you're in the clear with this because you're going to change the colors a little bit, but nothing with the logo, just the colors of the logo. Um, so I'm going to populate. This is Johnston County, North Carolina. Um, and you can see that the logo is just very dark on this graphic that we have. Um, so I want to populate it in the bottom corner, but it's dark. You're not going to be able to see it there. What you're going to do is click on your logo. You're going to go to edit at the top 
And then there's this effect called Duotone. You click on that and you can go to custom. They already have some that um, can be formatted for you, but we like to do the custom and make the shadows lighter. We're gonna push that to the white and then we're gonna make the highlights lower. And it's just gonna pop that logo out for you on that dark background. So then you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need, but that's how you do the duo tone. Um, and so then we're gonna work with this graphic a little bit more. We're gonna zoom in on these fresh salads that Johnston County um, provided this photo with us. So what you're gonna do is, here's the photo originally, and I'll go back up to this one, and you can zoom in on these fresh salads like that. And we've added this lettuce background and I'll show you how to do that and how to make the um, dark background on Canva. So here's the zoomed in photo. You're gonna go to elements and then I just type in lettuce and we're gonna go to the photos. And this is the exact photo from the one up top. You're gonna pull that into the background. It will let me. Oops. Um, you can go to a range. Sometimes Zoom and Canva don't play very well together. Yes. So we're so recording this on Zoom and it sometimes acts funny. <laughs> yes. Let me try to do that one more time. Oh, not going to let me. But you can layer it and send to back. I just can, right click. Yeah. And you can also set image as background either way. Yeah. Yes. So layer and then um, bring to back, bring forward, things like that. Just right click. So this is kind of, um, my eyes are struggling with this to focus on the fresh salads that on the photo. So what I'm gonna do is bring this fo background photo down a little bit. And then on where the white part of the graphic is, I'm gonna change that to a darker color. And then I'm gonna bring this photo back up. And then here you can play with the transparency and you can bring that down. Again, it's up here in your little toolbox. It's this transparency block right here. And then you can bring that darker or lighter and things like that. So we're gonna keep that dark. And then same thing here, you can bring that logo down and that will help that image pop a little bit more. So right there is duo tone, changing transparency with a dark background. Um, I can show you what that looks like without the dark background as well. If we kept it light, if we kept that white, it just, the image doesn't pop as well with the dark background. So perfect. Um, I'm gonna move on to our next um, takeaway and this is B-roll and blurring your image. So when we go on media days to some of our clients, we take B-rolls of like the empty cafeteria to use in their marketing um, at later dates and add text to it and things like that. So these are some examples of B-rolls that you can take um, when there's no students in your cafeteria. So empty tables, empty chairs, and um, I'll show you how you can add the text and not make it so, um, apparent that it's your cafeteria empty. Here's some trays and then um, empty seating as well. Here's the picture that I'm gonna use to blur the background. So I've made it as big as the graphic. We're gonna center that and then we're gonna click edit. This is where we live in the edit world. And then we're gonna hit blur right next to the duotone that I showed you earlier. And you can blur the whole image or you can um, use a brush. So I'll show you what the brush looks like. You can change the intensity and you're just going to brush what you want to blur. We like to use the whole image and then you can make the intensity bigger or you want it to look um, more transparent and things like that. Then you can add a text box here and you're still using your photography from your schools and not just stock photography. So that's something that we like to use when working with our clients' um, pictures. So moving on, I'm gonna talk about, this is one of our favorites. This is uh, mock-ups. 
So this is a video mock-up. I'll just play it for you. It's just the lady typing on her keyboard. Um, but you can see that this frame right here is where you can upload a logo or any type of graphic. And I will show you what that looks like. So this is the logo that we're going to use for this, this video mock-up. Um, to find the video mockups, you're going to go to, I'm sorry, I'm moving you around a lot. Um, you're going to go to apps and you're going to scroll down and it's right under popular, right next to the QR code that we talked about earlier. And, um, you can hit mockups. You'll see the coffee cups, there's videos, smartphones, so many different things. And Liz will talk about more in a minute. So I'm going to drag this logo into this video mock-up. And you see how it has a teal background on a teal frame, you would say on the video. You're gonna load it and I will zoom in. And that's just working its magic, putting that logo on the coffee cup. It does take a little bit, um, but then it, I will show you how to edit it down if the logo doesn't fit correctly. So you can see that it has cu cut off the common eagle. So you're just gonna double click in that video and then you can do, um, you can fit the logo into that square and then hit apply changes and it's gonna work its magic again and it should be good as new. Um, so while that's working, that's just a video mock-up that you can do. There's also just standard mock-ups when it's just a photo. Um, so one thing that we've done with one of our clients is they opened up a coffee bar and we created this flyer months ago for them um, when the coffee bar opened up. And so to repurpose that flyer and to help with um, gauging students um, on their social media, we're just going to pop that flyer back into this coffee graphic. So again, I'm just going to grab this and you'll see that teal frame around that photo and it's going to pop back in. And I will zoom in so you can see that. Perfect. Now let's go back and check on our mug and it's good as new. It looks great. So um, that is the photo mock-up and video mock-up. And then Liz is going to talk to you a little bit more about um, mock-ups. And it's funny. So both of those, you know, that one right there, we didn't change the graphic at all. We made that graphic for social media. You could tweak that as much as you needed, but we just took something that already existed. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pick up um, where Ariane left off. And I will say too, for this, we thought it would be really cute to maybe post of like, we're working on this month's menus, look, you know, look for things coming up and you'll see somebody typing. So, um, all righty. Uh, in the past, we have, um, we've, we love posting, obviously menus. We like to do them weekly, but if we do like a whole month, Hey, come check out our new month's menus are, are live. We've been using this and probably many of you have, if you've been using Canva, this little laptop frame, it's cute. It's nice. You need to share but... the screen, Liz. Oh my goodness. Oh, wait, it says stop share. It says stop share. Hold on. Let me try again. There it is. All right. Can you see it now? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, this graphic right here um, is what we've been doing. You, This uh, laptop that you see here is a um, just a frame that's been in Canva for years and years and years, but with the new release of new tips. Um, or new uh, features, there are things like this where you can slide a screenshot in. So um, this, let me show you, uh, actually, I apologize. I should have had a screenshot already in there, but I'll just use, um, I'll use this here and we'll make it work. So let's just say I wanted to put the menu in here. I can crop it as Ariane showed us, right? So I'm going to zoom in until I'm only seeing the screen with the menu. Okay. So that's a little bit better. Um, so now instead, it just looks like it, it's got more dimension to it. It has angle to it, if you can see. Um, actually just used this the other day for a client. Um, here's another one. Same thing. You can, um, I'm going to detach that image. Well, let's see. Um, 
when I put, I'll just show it. It's when you click and slide that screenshot um, of your menu, you can even make it look a little bit more cartoony. So this is just a new look to something that we've been doing. Okay. So I have four more <laughs> designs to show you. Um, and there's a lot of steps in these. So bear with me. Okay. Uh, it's going to look great in the end. So we love to do, we have, we work with state associations and with districts and we love to do whether it's a member spotlight or a board member spotlight for an association or a staff member, we love to do these. However, sometimes we get photos that the photo quality might not be that great, or it's a family photo and they've got family members with them. And rather than go back and forth and try to get a good photo, it would be great to be able to doctor the photo they sent us. So that's what you're going to see me do right here for Miss Belinda in Georgia. Okay. So there's a lot of steps here. Let's start with um, <clears throat> let's start with magic uh, or the upscaler. So if you click edit, there's image upscaler. It's not perfect. It's still learning, but it does it does wonders. So you can do upscale up to eight times. Two to three is fine. You don't need to go any higher than that. Um, so it does take a second, um, but it isn't just smooth this out, get rid of that pixelation. Um, as it's doing that, I'll scroll down to show you. This is Miss Fonda Bradford in Tennessee, and this was using Image Upscaler for her photo. You literally just click the photo, click edit, click Image Upscaler, and it did all that work for us. This is also great if you have your photo that you receive is really tiny and it's really small. We use that a lot too. And then we're going to remove that background, even though we love that she's there with her significant other. Um, we're going to remove the background. And um, so as you can see here, it will give you a preview of what the photo is going to look like. So keep your eyes peeled. You're going to see a brand new photo here in a second. <clears throat> there we go. Nice and smooth, no longer pixelated. So in the past, um, again, these advanced Canva tips, you probably would use background remover, right? Well, that's going to be great, but he will also be there, right? And we wanted this photo of just her. So we're not going to use background remover. We're going to use magic grab. So click the photo and click edit. And right here is magic grab. Kind of like leveled up background. It's going to help you level up. So now you get to click on just what you want to pull out from this image. So I want just her and that's part of her shirt too. So I'm gonna click grab. grab. And now we'll be able to just work with her. All right, watch this. We've pulled her out of the graphic. <laughs> So you see, I will say I have done this before where I have um, there's somebody sent a photo in and there was like a trash can in the back that I didn't love. I've used this magic eraser to delete a trash can from a picture before. Um, so now we have just her. So let's do a little bit more here. Um, I'm going to I want to angle this a little bit, too, so we can see her a bit. I'm going to move this forward. There we go. So I can... We're going to try to, there we go, do like this. And if you're not familiar, you can go to position. And these, if sometimes you can, you know, like Ariane showed you, you can go backwards and forwards and stuff like that. I want to also point out, you'll see this a lot with me, layers. You can click layers and you can click and drag these things in front of or behind as well. So that's layers or arrange. So now Belinda's picture has been upgraded. Um, we no longer have the background or somebody that was right there next to her. And we couldn't have done that with just a regular old background remover. So <clears throat> we're going to use these tools in new ways. So we've got these apple cinnamon parfaits at New Hampshire County Schools. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's say this is a brand new item and we really want to bring this design to life and make it really pop. So we're going to click on it and go to edit. And we're going to do that magic grab again. And I only want to grab one of these. Fun fact about this, when I was at New Hanover County School seeing these, they were selling them. They were a dollar a piece. They were really good size. And I went to go grab a picture and the kids started buying them so fast that one of the pictures I got only has like three in it. <laughs> um, so now we've got just this one little guy. We can now make it bigger and I'm going to do a little some fun things here. So I made it a lot bigger. <clears throat> and we're going to my new favorite tool in Canva, 
which is shadows. So you can do something like a simple drop shadow. Do you see that shadow appearing? That's great. You might stop right there and that's the look you're looking for. Um, what I love to use it for is outline. You can make the thickness of your outline bigger or smaller and you can change the color of it. So you could do like that. So now I've got this and I might wanna go to like, like say new menu item. If I went to elements and search new menu item, I get this cute little thing here that says new item. And there we go. So now I've really pulled that apple cinnamon parfait out so people can see a little bit more detail on it too. Always, always think about the fact that people are looking at these mostly on their phones. If you're doing something on social media, it's mostly on a phone, so it's small. So that was a really cool way to take that plain photo, right? And really pull out that item. Um, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite things to do for, um, to go above and beyond that typical, you know, you know, meet the team kind of thing. But this is Miss Patsy Gregory over in Tennessee. Um, and so they want to do executive boards, executive committee spotlights. And we uh, love this pop out effect that you can do. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. It just takes a couple extra steps. So we've got her photo here and we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to slide that one photo in here. Now, double this is, and if you saw, I apologize, might be moving too fast, which is what we were accused of in, to, in, uh, in uh, ANC. So I've got my circle frame here. You know, a frame is where you can plug any photo. So click and drag it in there, double click, and we're going to make it bigger so that her head is popping out of that frame. Okay. So you see, she's kind of cut off there. Now you're going to really, there's a lot of trial and error with this, but it's worth it. I'm going to try to make it a similar size just by looking at it for a sec. There's going to be room to tweak later. And let's just get rid of that background. Now, what we want to do is put her on top of that, and then we're going to crop it. What makes it difficult is that when I do it, it's trying to snag it and put it in that frame. So I might have to use my keyboard. I'm going to click on this, use my keyboard, and I'm sliding it over. Okay. Now, once I get it pretty lined up, I'm going to start cropping this photo that's on the top. So I click on it, and let's get rid of this. And this is where you start to tweak and fix. And you're really lining it up. So I'm going to have to look at where her neck is. Uh, we could be here for a little bit doing this, but I hope you, I'm going to, we're short on time, but I hope you can see that all you do is keep tweaking a tiny bit. We're almost there and you'll get it just right. Okay. The only thing that's really difficult is that it keeps trying to pick up, but use your keyboard, your up, down, left, right arrows, and you'll be able to line this up perfectly. You might have to resize this a little bit as you go. Okay. All right. So. We're going to keep moving from there. Um, this is um, when Ariane was talking about blur, I almost blurred it out, like pay attention because I'm going to bring this back up. <laughs> so we love to get pictures of kiddos um, in the cafeteria if possible, but a lot of districts and there might be, you know, students that you can't take pictures of kids or um, maybe you've got a handful of kids at one school that you can't take a photo of. You got this great picture, but let's just say that little girl right there, you can't post her photo. And you're like, oh man, I might lose this picture that I would otherwise post. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here. We're gonna click that and duplicate it. So I've got two of the picture. This back one, we're gonna go and edit, blur it like Ariane showed us. So edit and blur. And I'm going to do the whole photo and I'm gonna blur it, okay? So you really can't see that child in the background now. Perfect, that is good to go. Now I'm gonna take this picture and we're gonna do background remover. And it took away those kit, the um, all the background. And now we could slide this on top. So now we are focused on the three that we took a picture of and we blurred the background. So we can use this picture now, which is a great savings. We hate to see pictures that we can't use for various reasons. So anything we can do to save it, we wanna do it. Um, I wanted to share, this is not our graphic. I saw this just before ANC. Um, Texas Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, they did the same similar thing as um, we did up here with Patsy 
only they layered it with a solid color circle in between. So it was like solid color circle and then that photo of them um, on top. And it really um, helped this pop, um, which I love this. One of the reasons I really like this is these, all these ladies, their photos were taken at different times in different places, different backgrounds. And having that teal background now makes it all look uniform. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's just say you've got your, let's, okay. Let's say we've got a photo of someone. Um, we're going to get rid of that background. You get rid of their background and you have your circle frame. Click and drag that over. You can double click to make it larger, smaller, however you'd like to do. But now you've got this person. Then you just have a plain old circle. You know, you go to your elements, you've got your shapes, and you just do any color circle you want. And now you could slide that person over there. So it's very simple. Took the photo, removed the background, put it in a circle frame, and then put it on top of a plain circle. So something very easy that looks very sharp. All right. And we are wrapping up with my last favorite tip. I've said like five things are my favorites today, but this one's my favorite because it's just so easy and it looks so cool. So I love this layered effect where you've got hollow text and you can have something kind of popping out a little bit. So, so simple to do. All you're going to do is I like to do pick a text that is very big and bold. That's what I like to do. So let's just say we did apples. Um, Oh, let's do pumpkin spice. It's September, right? Let's do pumpkin spice. <laughs> so if we did pumpkin spice, and that's our letters. Let's of course make them. Uh, well, we won't make them orange. We'll make it purple because our we're going to use a pumpkin. So if we did that orange, I also want to shout out to something I use on almost every design is line spacing. Did you see how naturally the text was that far away? That doesn't look great. I almost always tighten up line spacing. So I've got pumpkin spice text, okay? And let's find a pumpkin. For this one, I'm gonna look for a photo of a real pumpkin. Let's snag this one, okay? Now, this is so simple and so, so cool. So take that pumpkin spice you've got, duplicate it. Now you've got this other text. Go to effects, and you're gonna make that one hollow. Put it right back where it was. And this was what I was showing you earlier. If you go to position and your layers, you can move the layers around easily. And now you've got on the bottom is what's the lowest list is your bottom. So you've got your solid color, your pumpkin, and then your hollow tech. And that is how you achieve that. Um, I will show you one quick way. I'm going to merge a bunch of tips that I just showed you. <laughs> so let's, um, I'm going to show you how to achieve this. Okay. So let me duplicate it. We're going to start it in a new one. So this photo um, was sent into us by a client and I wanted to try to make this pop a little bit. So first we're going to um, duplicate it as I always do. Right. And then let's we're not going to do background remover because if we did background remover, it might not remove exactly what we want. We're going to go to edit and we're going to use that magic grab and we're going to tell it what we want to keep and get rid of the rest. So I want to keep the arm, the cheese, and that, bur that breakfast burrito. So I'm going to grab all of that and I want to get rid of the rest. Then I'm going to put some hollow text in there as well. So um, there we go. Now we've got an arm and a breakfast burrito hanging out. <laughs> so we've got this, we line it up perfectly right on top. That was easy to do. I didn't resize anything. So let's do text that says new, but let's do again. I like a really big, bold, um, archivo black is usually a good one. Um, and let's make this, what, green? I don't know that I want green do a blue, I guess. No, that's not going to show up very well. Um, we'll just do this for now. Okay. So let's and as always, you know, uh, if you know me, you know I'm doing line spacing and I'm going to tighten this up. So it's new, new, new all over the place. Now this is a little busy, but it's my way of being able to show you 
everything <laughs> that you've learned practically in one thing. So we've got new and we're going to duplicate it. You see me duplicate a lot. And then we're going to go to effects and we've got our hollow. So now we're going to go to our position and our layers and move our layers around. So let's do, there we go. We've got our bottom layer is the full photo. We've got our solid text, that floating arm with the burrito and then hollow. That's all on top of each other. So we threw a lot at you in record time, Ariane. I think we still moved fast, but not as fast as before. <laughs> um, so with that, um, we'll uh, leave you with this. Um, uh, follow up with, or I'm not follow up, but follow us on social media because we're going to do more of these Canva hacks. Ariane, is there anything we missed? <laughs> I don't think so. For those that did attend the ANC Boston session, hopefully this was like a front eye view and you get the steps correct and everything like that. But as we mentioned there, there's so many tips and um, Canva is all the time coming out with new things. So like Liz said, stay tuned for all of the new Canva hacks. All right. Thanks everybody. And let us know what you want to try to achieve in Canva. And we'll just have Michaela figure, Michaela will figure out in record time. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. Check this out.